What is going on trash talkers? We're back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the best remaining NFL free agents going into the 2021 NFL season. All that and much more coming your way right now. All right, Nick, the 2021 NFL season is almost upon us. We are getting ready for the start of training camp. And as we talked about in yesterday's video, Melvin Ingram just signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that left us thinking, what players are still left in free agency that could be signed either during training camp, prior to training camp, or after training camp? Taking a look at this list, I was utterly shocked at the sheer amount of talent that is still available in the free agency pool. I mean, it is just eye-opening to say the least and I think both of us thought the same thing out of the roster that you could make out of free agents you could probably get a playoff team in either the NFC or AFC it really doesn't matter uh, but I want to take a look at the some key free agents that I think are still available uh, starting off with offensive guard D David DeCastro from the Pittsburgh Steelers the Steelers recently released DeCastro and he has hit free agency I know that he had some initial interest to starting off with the New York Jets and a couple of other teams, but I, I honestly think that his his number one priority should be going up to the Northwest and being with the Seattle Seahawks protecting Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson needs all the protection he can get as he has been sacked so many times, averaging 42 times a season, which is just bonkers to me but the idea that uh david DeCastro, who is relatively one of the top five guards in the nfl at this time he's looking for starter money and the the seahawks they don't have a lot to work with i'm sure that he they could pitch to him hey if you take a cut we could possibly make a Super Bowl run, specifically with you coming onto this offensive line. So I think that the Seattle Seahawks could really benefit with David DeCastro. I think that's a great option for David DeCastro, but a position that is a little bit more important than guard in the offensive line is offensive tackle. And when I'm looking at the available offensive tackles, I'm looking straight at Russell Okung, a guy who was a starter in this league for such a long time now, and he's still a starter in this league. He's still at that caliber of play. And when I'm looking at teams that are looking for a starting left tackle, I'm looking at the Philadelphia Eagles. They are a team who had a very, very bad offensive line last year. They re-signed Jason Peters to play guard. And then because they lost their tackle, they have to go and put Jason Peters a tackle. And then guess what? He got hurt as well. Russell Okung is a guy who doesn't get injured. He's a guy you can rely upon to block your blind side, to take care of that. And that's exactly what Jalen Hurts needs going into year two. He needs to make sure that everybody behind him is taken care of. He doesn't need to worry about somebody coming from behind, trying to strip him or hurt him or do something of the sort. He's got to be sure that that offensive line can hold him up while he's trying to work through his kinks in his game, in his young career. Absolutely. Uh, next up, we have Richard Sherman, who obviously has been in the news as of recent just because of off the field issues for the first time in his career. Uh, but hopefully that'll get resolved and he doesn't have to worry about that too much. But if he is able to get onto the field, I would like to see Richard Sherman in in a spot where I think that he is most comfortable. And I actually think it's going to be with the New York Jets. I think that Richard Sherman would be able to mentor the young cornerbacks that they have in New York. And he would be paired with Robert Sala, who he thrived with while he was in San Francisco. I mean, the two of them were almost inseparable based on reports. So I believe that Richard Sherman could come in, be the, the beacon of light that they need on the defensive backfield. He's still a top corner. He can still do great things as long as he stays healthy, and then he can also teach the young guys. I think it would work in so many different ways. I like the New York Jets for Richard Sherman. Continuing on the defensive side of the ball, I want to talk about Justin Houston, one of my favorite defensive players of all time. I've loved this guy since I've seen him in the NFL, and to see him outside of the Kansas City Chiefs, it just didn't seem right. But I believe 
now that Melvin Ingram has signed with the Steelers and the Chiefs have lost out on Melvin Ingram, they're still looking for an edge pressure. Why not go back to Old Faithful, Justin Houston, a guy who grew up in that system, who dominated in that system. And although he may not be 100% with the coaching staff, I think this would be a perfect position for Justin Houston to go back to Kansas City, where he started and played the majority of his career, and to be in a system where Patrick Mahomes is leading this team to Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl, Justin Houston could not only help this team, but be the key piece to get them over the top, get this defense into a position where this team could really win the Super Bowl, get them all the way this time. I believe that Justin Houston would work really well back in the Kansas City system, and Kansas City could really use a guy of Justin Houston's caliber. Next up, we have linebacker K.J. Wright and. Far be it for me to talk about the Seattle Seahawks for the third straight pick, but I believe that KJ Wright needs to go right back to Seattle as a 32 year old linebacker. He does not have many more options. He doesn't have many more years left in his playing days. And I believe that when you are paired next to Bobby Wagner, only good things can come for you. And KJ Wright still being a free agent is really just a slap on the wrist to him. And it's a slap on the wrist to the Seattle Seahawks organization for not bringing this guy back. He is an incredible talent. He has done great things over the course of his career and he might be a little slower than he once was sure but who isn't at age 32 I believe at this point KJ Wright needs to be re-signed with the Seattle Seahawks even if it's a one or two year deal veteran minimum he needs to go back to this defense and really solidify things with Bobby Wagner moving to the offensive side of the ball when I look at the running backs Le'Veon Bell is a huge name that is still a free agent and it's a, it's a real wonder why, because this is a guy who's putting up 1,000 receiving yards, 1,000 rushing yards a season in that Pittsburgh system, and then he takes a year off, then goes to the Jets where it doesn't work out, gets cut, and then plays for the Kansas City Chiefs where he really just didn't get a lot of playing time and didn't make the most of his reps. Le'Veon Bell may still have what it takes to play in the NFL, but honestly, I just don't think that after everything he said and everything he's done throughout his career, another team is willing to give him a third shot. I believe that he has broken every single relationship he has had. And even with teams that have never talked to him, they've seen the relationships he's had with other organizations and they don't want to even touch him. They don't want to be a part of the saga that is Le'Veon Bell. And I believe Le'Veon Bell is done. I believe that his career is over and he will stay a free agent until he ultimately decides to finally retire officially. Wow, that, that's absolutely incredible. Uh, moving on to back to the defensive side of the ball where things make a little more sense. Uh, the defensive line, some guy I never thought I would see hit free agency, defensive tackle, Geno Atkins. I believe Geno Atkins is one of those guys that can really be a disruptor in the middle of the defensive line, even though he is going to be starting the season at age 33. I believe that he still has really good football still left to be played he showed that you know a lot of things were left on the table in Cincinnati a lot of that came from the fact that he was in a situation where he wasn't competing for anything year in and year out and that's got to wear on your mental stability so now that he's a free agent he can take a look at the landscape of the NFL and say listen you are a defensive tackle away from being able to compete even more so for the playoffs or for a championship run. Let, let me come in and take a veteran minimum deal and be that for you. When I take a look at the landscape of the league, I believe that the best spot for him would actually be in San Francisco. I think with the 49ers, Geno Atkins could really shine being the offset to Javon Kinlaw I think he'd be able to come in on third down specifically and really get after the passer he'd be able to create pressure straight up the middle and at age 33 he doesn't have to play every single down you can have him play on first and second down if you want a four down defensive line but I, I think that his best opportunity would be on third down rushing the passer getting pressure right up the middle I think that's the best way to get Geno Atkins on this roster you know, I talked uh, not so good things about Le'Veon Bell, but there is another running back that is available that I think definitely belongs on an NFL team. 
Todd Gurley is a guy that I believe still has a place in this league. He's still a young buck at heart. His knees may not be everything they used to be, but I believe in the right system, Todd Gurley can still be an absolute dog, an absolute workhorse for the Baltimore Ravens. I believe the Baltimore Ravens have finally gotten some receivers. They're finally getting this offensive line under control. I think they're just missing one small piece. And that's a goal line back. And you can say they have Gus Edwards. They have J.K. Dobbins. These guys are big enough to handle the goal line work. But what Todd Gurley has been able to do over his career on the goal line has been absolutely incredible. He's like LeGarrette Blunt. He's an absolute bulldozer. He's a massive body, and he's very hard for defensive lines to take down that close to the goal lines. He knows how to fall forward, how to get across that end zone. I believe that Todd Gurley would really fit well in the Raven system, and he would really only be used in a niche role where you know he's going to deliver every single time. I think it's just a perfect match made in heaven, and he gets to do it in an electric offense with Lamar Jackson leading the helm. I believe that it would really work out for both parties, and it would be a really fun sight to see Ty Gurley in that black and purple. Next up, we have cornerback Nikel Roby Coleman, and I believe that Nikel Roby Coleman is one of those guys who... He's not a number one corner by any stretch of the imagination, but he's a very solid number two. One of the top number two corners that you could possibly have. He's great in the slot. He can be moved all over the defensive backfield. And once again, I take a look at where the issues lie on defense, and I have to take a look at either the San Francisco 49ers or the Seattle Seahawks. I think both of these defenses could utilize a little more talent. And I believe Nikhil Roby Coleman, when I take a look at both of these defenses, probably makes more sense on the Seattle Seahawks. I think that the loss of Shaquille Griffin is going to be too massive for this defensive backfield to really rebound from. So you have to bring in somebody who can at least hold their own. And I believe that Nikel Roby Coleman is exactly that for the Seattle Seahawks. And finally, I want to bring up a true legend in the NFL, Larry Fitzgerald, the one everybody loves. Larry Fitzgerald is going into the 100th year of his career, it seems, and he's still looking to get on a roster. He's hoping it's the Arizona Cardinals, but the Arizona Cardinals are absolutely stacked at the position, and I believe if he does not return to the Arizona Cardinals, I believe that the Minnesota Vikings would be willing and open to a Larry Fitzgerald signing. I believe that Patrick Peterson is there, and that is a close brother of Larry Fitzgerald. They have been in communication. Larry Fitzgerald is from Minnesota. He is he grew up in the area. He grew up a Vikings fan. If Larry Fitzgerald can't be in Arizona, he'd rather be in his hometown. I believe that this would be a great fit where Larry Fitzgerald can mentor Justin Jefferson. He could even teach Adam Thielen a thing or two. But most importantly, he'd be a security blanket for this offense. If you can't get to your first two targets, Larry Fitzgerald is a guy that you can rely on. He's a big body receiver for Kirk Cousins, and I think that he would go a long way in this offense. And the Minnesota Vikings are on the precipice of really taking a hold of the NFC North. I think Larry Fitzgerald puts this offense offense just a little bit far ahead of everybody else in the division that would be absolutely insane just like I never thought Tom Brady would be in a different uniform other than the Patriots I don't think that I would ever see Larry Fitzgerald in another uniform besides the Cardinals it'd be very interesting to see him in the in the purple and gold that is the Minnesota Vikings but nonetheless it is very possible and adding him to Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson would just be absolutely insane Either way, there's a ton of talent that is still left in free agency, ton of names that we didn't even get to talk about today. But overall, I, I think that a lot of these guys are going to either have to wait for injuries or they're going to have to wait for somebody to fall out of grace in their current role. I, I think this is the point where they just have to hope and pray that a, a position opens up because not a lot is going to happen otherwise. All right, well, that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.